What a lot of people don't know is that when those early expeditions were undertaken, the New South Wales colonial government of the time, when they were standing over there on the eastern seaboard, they started to imagine that all of the rivers in New South Wales must run inland to fill up an inland sea. So because of that belief, a lot of those early expeditions were equipped with small watercraft. So Major Thomas Mitchell had two small rowboats as part of his equipment. In 1844, when uh, Captain Charles Sturt undertook his expedition, which included the discovery of Broken Hill, he included a whale boat as part of his equipment. So what we've stopped here to look at now is some post-contact rock art. Post-contact rock art is from that very narrow window of time when you've got non-Aboriginal people arriving in these landscapes for the first time and you've got Aboriginal people seeing non-Aboriginal people for the first time. And they usually were pretty impressed by the technology they were seeing for the first time. So what we can see now is some post-contact rock art and this particular rock art represents a small rowboat which was probably carried by Sir Major Thomas Mitchell. He had two small rowboats as part of his equipment. And just to confirm that we are indeed looking at post-contact rock art, underneath that representation of the rowboat is a representation of a horse, or Yaraman in Aboriginal language. And again, he's represented in red ochre. We can see the horse's chest here, rising up to his head. There's the horse's nose, rising up to his ear. Down the mane, right along the back, around the rump, and there's the tail going off the end there. And of course, post-contact rock art often records the technology of the time. If you go up into the Northern Territory, you might see images of sailing ships and bicycles and rifles and that type of technology.